graduates, families, and friends. My name is Mandy Savitz-Romer, and I am the Faculty Director of the Prevention Science and Practice Program, and I am honored to be with you today to represent the PSP faculty and staff to congratulate you and your families on the completion of your Certificate of Advanced Study in Counseling. Although we are here to celebrate, this celebration is bittersweet. It is hard to celebrate when we know that so many people are suffering. While not new for many of us, in this moment, the connection to suffering feels particularly universal. In recognition of this, I would like to start my remarks today by pausing for a moment to let each of us think about people in our lives who we want to lift up. Who do you want to share this moment of joy with? Who are you graduating today because of or for? Let us pause and lift up those people in our minds and our hearts. For me, graduation brings joy, in part because it is a yearly opportunity for me to honor my many educators. Some of these educators have been famous theorists and researchers, but most of them have been everyday folks who came into my life unexpectedly and generously shared pieces of themselves with me. Today, I would like to thank my PSP faculty colleagues and Karen Botari, my work family, because they lift me up every day and I know have been an integral part of your experience. I also want to honor each of you as educators and counselors. I want to celebrate what you have taught me, both over the course of this year, and in particular as we have navigated learning and connection in the midst of a pandemic. You have not allowed the COVID-19 crisis to define your experience at HGSC this year. Instead, you have seized hold of it as a part of your education, as a moment of learning, a time to build community in new and creative ways, and an opportunity to reimagine what is possible for schools. This was not what you signed up for, but you have made it a critical part of your journey. In PSP, we talk a lot about context. Although this may partially be the result of our love for Yuri Bronfenbrenner, it is also because we fundamentally believe that context helps shape individual and collective development. Context is like the stage on which human development and education unfolds. It turns our attention away from individual problems or events and helps us ask critical questions about the structures and systems and assumptions that shape our experiences. Whether we were intimately aware of it before or not, the current pandemic has made the context of inequity in our country starkly visible. Even as this public health crisis has upended our lives and the lives of many of our loved ones, we know that its impact and reach have varied across community. COVID-19 has shown a bright light on structural inequality in our society, and as a result, it has been a crucial reminder of how our work as educators is far more complicated than a single issue or a single problem. Today, regardless of where we are physically, it is easy to see how delivering individual counseling, providing lessons on social emotional development, or supporting students' post-secondary transitions must also take into account these important aspects of our context that keenly impact children and families. For example, we must clearly see and address the differential access to health and educational resources that impact students. We must more consistently and effectively stand up against acts of racism and ignorance that affect African American, Asian American, Latinx, Caribbean, Indigenous, and Middle Eastern families and communities. We must ensure that all families have access to the material and financial resources that they need for well being. And we must continue to address issues of mental health in communities and families, which in many cases have been exacerbated by the current pandemic. So much harm that has come to so many during this crisis has not been the result of the virus itself, but the inequities and injustices and prolonged silence that have existed around these issues for too long. 
as school and adjustment counselors, the context in which we work can feel challenging and at times insurmountable. But this spring, you have taught me that challenge can be as generative as it is destructive. Becoming educated for you has not just been about earning an advanced degree, it has been an act of justice. You have taken the relationships and wisdom that you gained last year, and you have doubled down on your commitment to take your new knowledge and use it in service to young people, families, and communities. You have Zoomed, Skyped, FaceTimed, and Google Met with students to offer them counseling and guidance and academic support. You have searched the internet for endless hours to help your supervisors learn best practices for engaging in virtual counseling. You have helped to complete college applications, comforted parents and caregivers who've been struggling at home, and generated digital content for students. And importantly, you have reached out to each other, providing love and support to one another. You have been patient and kind with us, your faculty, as we struggled through our own transition to online learning. Your response to this pandemic has been a critical reminder that in challenge, there is also possibility. You have helped to make this spring an education in maintaining one's commitment to children and youth, remaining flexible and giving generously. And in the process, you have reminded me that the most important lessons often do not come from books, but instead through the words and actions of dedicated change makers, students, families, educators, counselors, and many others who show us new ways of thinking and being in this complex world. I wish all of you the courage to do the important work, good health to stay strong, and continued love from all of us in PSP. Congratulations to all of you in the CAS program. I'm proud of you. And now I'd like to introduce our CAS student speaker, Margaret Chumley. Good afternoon. Thank you to all of the family, friends, partners, and colleagues who have joined us today in this virtual space. Welcome. At this time, on behalf of the entire CAS 2020 cohort, I wanted to take a few moments to express my sincere gratitude to all of the PSP CAS faculty and staff who have supported us over these past two years. Karen Batari, our program administrator, was one of the very first people to welcome us to the program. She actively engages students on at least a weekly basis, and her door, literally and virtually, is always open to us, be it for logistical issues to ensure we'd actually graduated and earn our licenses, or to provide snacks, chocolate, and tea, or to give us a needed pep talk on a hard day. Thank you, Karen. None of us would have made it to this point without you. Thank you also to our teaching fellows who enriched our learning by bringing a wealth of knowledge and experience to our courses. In particular, I'd like to acknowledge Daniel Duarte, who was with us for our entire second year and was a constant source of support, knowledge, and positivity, reminding us always to reach down for our roots, up for our dreams, swing with the winds of change, and that we have the power to stomp out oppression. Thank you, Danielle and RTFs. Thank you to the faculty assistants, whose titles do not reflect the full scope of their support for students in addition to faculty. As students, we rarely, if ever, actually see you, but know that we appreciate the work that you do to support us. Dean Redfern is just one of these invaluable but often unseen people whose logistical and technical support has been essential over and over again. Thank you, Dean, and all of the PSP CAS faculty assistants. Finally, our faculty. Thank you to Art Ferguson, Josephine Kim, Holly Lem, and Jackie Zeller for helping us develop the clinical skills and knowledge necessary to become critical thinkers and holistic counselors. We will carry what we have learned for years to come. Thank you, Gretchen Brian Mizels, for sharing your deep passion for young people and social justice and for helping us build the intellectual foundation for our work. Thank you also to Bob Selman, Nancy Hill, and Adriano Magna Taylor for your kindness, curiosity, and constant encouragement in your classrooms. You all have been integral to our intellectual and professional growth, and we thank you for that. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank Mandy Savitz Romer, the Nancy Forsheimer Aronson Senior Lecturer on Human Development and Education and our Faculty Director. Along with Karen, Mandy was one of the first people to welcome us to the PSP CAS program and has been a constant source of support for us over these past two years. 
For those of us focusing our studies and future work on adolescence, Mandy has been our professor continuously for two full years. As a professor, Mandy has driven us to become data-driven advocates and social justice warriors. She has prepared us to be leaders and change agents wherever we may go. This year, though, Mandy has been more than a professor to us. She has served as a de facto advisor and mentor and continues to do so even as we transition out of the program. Mandy, I cannot imagine having completed this journey without you, and I am so grateful that I've had the privilege of being your student. On behalf of the entire cohort, thank you for everything you have done for us and for all that you continue to do. My deepest gratitude goes out to the PSP, CAS faculty and staff. We could never have come this far without you. Thank you. And now, it is my pleasure to share with you the graduates of the CAS in Counseling program. As I read their names, I will also share a little bit about their backgrounds and their field work, where they completed 900 hours of training. First, the CAS class marshal, Margaret Elizabeth Chumley. Margaret spent her first year placement at the Kip Lynn School, where her supervisor Dave said she could not be better suited for a career in youth work and student support. He described her as the epitome of a strong, empathic, unflappable counselor, and that he fully expects her to work across communities to help students see the good in themselves and the world. In her second placement at the Edward M. Kennedy Health Careers Academy, Margaret's supervisor Carmen emphasized her self-reflection, her initiative, her sense of humor, and professionalism, all of which will carry her very far. Congratulations, Margaret. Jeanette Sibeli. Jeanette spent her first year at Prospect Hill Academy Charter School, where her supervisor, Aaron, said that Jeanette's relationships with students were genuine and authentic. She added, that students saw Jeanette's investment in them and greatly appreciated her as a result. So much so that one senior wrote about Jeanette in her graduation speech, something that rarely happens with student teachers and interns. In Jeanette's second year, she interned at Brown Middle School, where her supervisor Sam described her as reliable and efficient, noting that she was always adding insight and empathy to her work with her students and contributed to the school in major ways. Congratulations, Jeanette. Kate Elizabeth Jacobson. Kate spent her first year at the Lincoln K-8 school in Brookline, where her supervisor Barbara said that Kate approached all challenges with ease and humor, and she really lit up when she worked with middle schoolers. Kate's supervisor from her second placement, which was at the McCormick Middle School in Boston, where Justine said that Kate was an absolute rock star intern, she described Kate as incredibly smart, highly skilled, and very articulate. Kate has made quite the impression with the students and staff there, and Justine says will be sorely missed. Congratulations, Kate. Jenny Ji Yoon Kim. Jenny spent her first year at the Ringe Ave Upper School in the Cambridge Public Schools, where her supervisor, Shanika, celebrated Jenny's dedication, her patience, her resilience, passion, and dope personality. She knows that Jenny's future will be future students will be very lucky to have her. In her second year, Jenny worked at Watertown High School, where her supervisor, Adrian, said Jenny made great connections with our students and contributed to their department in countless ways, mentioning that the entire counseling department is going to miss having Jenny there. Congratulations, Jenny. Nicole Podoloff. Nikki, as we know her, has spent her first year placement at the Mendel Elementary School in Boston, where Nikki was described as a wonderful addition to their school. Her supervisors, both of them, described her as incredibly thoughtful in her approach to her work with students and also how she contributed to building school community, especially in her work with restorative justice. They also added, added that Nikki's care for her students was palpable whenever she spoke of them. In her second year, Nikki worked at the Kennedy School in Somerville, where her supervisor, Emily, was quick to say Jenny was an incredible asset to the school community. She brought enthusiasm, creativity, and empathy to her work. She says that Nikki was beloved by the students there. Congratulations, Nikki. 
Andrew Renfield. Andrew spent his first year at the Holmes Elementary School where his supervisor, Kevin, described him as caring, selfless, flexible, dedicated, thoughtful, kind, driven, empathic, trustworthy, authentic, and with a timely sense of humor. Kevin shared that Andrew depicts the future of who and what a mental health counselor should embody as a provider to our diverse communities and this world. In his second year, Andrew spent time at the Coolidge Corner School where his supervisor, Jen, described him as intelligent, creative, multi-talented, and funny, while being immensely modest. And she appreciated that Andrew was able to teach an old dog like her new tricks and says the world is lucky to have him in it. Congratulations, Andrew. Naja Nicole Turner. Naj, as we know her, spent her first year at the Holmes Elementary School where her supervisor, Kevin, described her as a warm ray of sunshine on a blustery cold day. He said he was always willing to chuckle. He always chuckles when he recalls Naj's willingness on her very first day to spontaneously don a star costume, learn a catchy lyric, and jump on stage to perform a song and dance in front of the entire school. In her second year, Naj spent time at the Boston Arts Academy, where her supervisor, Charmaine, said, that her laughter gives off such positive energy and that she loves your vibe so much. Charmaine added that she was honored to have been your supervisor and hopes you will keep dreaming, keep planning, and keep doing. Congratulations, Naj. Without question, this is a talented group of professional counselors who bring heart and wisdom into their work. I couldn't be more proud of what you've accomplished and more excited to see where you go from here. Please join me in congratulating the CAS in Counseling graduating class of 2020.